writing for Mark. So I wonder if um, with Drew's recording of this, if Mark could use that as a reference for what he missed, if we want to start on time. Good idea. I think we have a lot to do, so I'm, I'll take that uh, as a yes. Is everybody okay with that? Mm -hmm. Okay. Uh, so a uh, couple of notes before we start. Uh, I want to acknowledge and thank um, Joanne and Amy for sharing the stat statistics about Hadley and the Hadley schools with us. Um, <clears throat> I think it's very helpful to have that kind of information and we probably should be getting more as we go along. Um, and uh, like to ask that we mute ourselves unless you're speaking. Um, it's a little tricky to make sure you remember when you're speaking to turn it back on, but I think it could help. Uh, you all, I assume, got the minutes of the last meeting. Um, Anything that we need to discuss about them, add to them? If not, do I hear a motion to approve those minutes? Approve. Okay, and second? Second. Okay, second. thank you. I don't think we need to put names with these motions and approvals unless you think so. It was moved and seconded. All in favor? Aye. Good. Thank you. It's unanimous. We have approved those. Um, I have a couple of requests that I put in the, in the um, agenda for this meeting that, uh, we re that you submit items for us to discuss as far ahead of time as possible. One of the difficulties with this meeting was that we ran up against uh, the deadline that they have for notification of the meeting. So I couldn't assemble the agenda. We have to have the agenda in the notification of the meeting, et cetera, et cetera. So I sort of dropped the ball. I'm happy for a motion to dismiss me as chair uh, for that awful mistake. Hearing none, I'll continue. Um, okay. So if you can keep that in mind, uh, by our next meeting is October 5th. So if you could have your suggestions for agenda items into us by, into Mark by Sunday, September 27, that gives him time to assemble them and, and to get them to me and for me to then put them into an agenda, notify the, the town and get the notice out to you. So any agenda items for next time, and I welcome them. I hope you will all submit them. Uh, get to Mark done by September 27. That's a Sunday. I mean, there's no specific time, but just if we get them by Sunday, then he can process them and get them to me by Tuesday, and et cetera. Um, if you would copy me with those suggestions when you send them to Mark, that would help speed the process up as well. Um, I'd also like you to consider in your thoughts for the future whether subcommittees um, who might meet outside of this monthly meeting could be helpful. And if so, can you give some thought to what those subcommittees might focus on to speed up our help uh, together. Um, our upcoming meetings are October 5th and November 2nd, and both of them will be, unless we decide otherwise, in 5.15, and we'll aim to be through at 6.15 in an hour. Um, as we go on, I ask you consider whether an hour is enough time for monthly meetings to get done what we need to do. And we might want to wait to see how much we have in our next agenda to, to make that decision. But please keep that in mind. So we have two related motions. Um, 
and uh, and I ask Devora first, would you present yours to us? I put it in the in the minutes, but I mean in the agenda. But would you kindly uh, annotate that for us? Okay. Um, can you tell me what that was, Wayne? Um, you said goals, creating a process of learning about the experiences of Hadley residents of color and other marginalized groups. In this way, by getting some data of lived experiences, we can better understand hopefully some of the things that get in the way of diversity and inclusion and equity in this town. Right, thank you. So, I mean, I don't need to add too much more to that, but I guess my feeling was, especially since we don't have, uh, the, the, our committee is not as diverse as we would like it to be, uh, that uh, un that we might proceed in the direction of perhaps a survey, perhaps qualitative interviews. I'm not really sure what the process would be exactly, but that we speak to members of our community and try to get some lived experiences, try to get stories and um, from them and ideas as to how this committee could be helpful to them. Could you, um, do you have any ideas about how specifically we might do that? I think it's a good idea personally. I, I mean, my only thought from working on a different committee is that stuff like this has been done and that we try to connect to another community where work like this has been done and find out more details of the process. Um, I'm trying to make this specific so we can act on it. Um, would you suggest we contact some committee that you know of that has done this and get them from them some ideas about how we can reach out? Yeah, I mean, the, the, I, I'd love to hear what other people think about the, just the idea that I've proposed. I don't have too many more specifics. Welcome discussion, uh, Pat. I love the idea. I, I agree with it. I, I, I had actually wondered if there might be a faculty member at UMass who does this kind of research that might like to partner with us to come up with a design. Okay. Yeah, I like that. How would we find such a person? What, what department, what area would you search in first? I think I saw, and I might have put it in my folder here, um, there's a woman, um, who does a program on intergroup dialogue and she was featured in one of the alumni publications. And I think I might, I think she's a member of the school of education, a faculty member in the school of education. Mm -hmm. So, you know, maybe we could start with someone like that. Right. I like that. And maybe if she can't help us specifically, um, uh, from her perspective, maybe she has other people she can recommend that we speak with. Anyone else like to discuss, add to this discussion? Uh, Joanne? Joanne? Um, that, I think this is an excellent idea. And one of the first things, I, I tend to think, where can uh, I start or we start small, localized, and grow from there. And the first thing I think of is the public school. And we've got Amy and we've got Ada here. So I would be interested in what ways we could start begin with the experience of students at the school. And even if we can get some of the stories of why some of the students left the school, um, I'm curious to see what Ada and Amy might have to say about that. But I, I like the idea of the whole town too. I'm just trying to think about what what, how could we like get started? That might be a good starting place. Amy, Ada, Amy. 
um, with the school, we could just do something as simple as a Google survey and see what students um, choose to respond. Mm -hmm. That could be an easy starting point. Ada? I mean, Ada yeah, I agree. Um, I think lots of students at the school have opinions and stories related to uh, race issues. Um, yeah, I think a Google form or something like that would work well, especially with students. How could, their emails. how could we do this? How could we, what would be the best way to go about this? We would have to ask uh, permission probably from the principal or the superintendent um, to send out a survey to them. And then we could probably just do it through my school email or through um, the superintendent or principal school e email, um, probably mine because I'm on the committee. And uh, assuming they approve it, you know, we just see how many students respond and then what their responses are. Uh, Amy and Ada, would you be willing to put your heads together about how best to do this and, um, and give us some suggestions? Um, sort of be a subcommittee about this and, and others might chime in with them and talk to them about it or make suggestions. But if you would spearhead this because you know practically how to do it. Kayla? I was going to volunteer as Devorah was talking about subcommittees. I'd be really interested in being part of a subcommittee focused on the schools um, as a teacher myself. I don't teach in this community, but, but my passion is certainly what's going on in the lives of young people. So I would be glad to partner. I also noticed in the chat that Pat uh, came up with a name for mm -hmm. um, somebody to reach out to at UMass. And I don't think it would hurt to do more than one outreach kind of thing. I, I would love to join that subcommittee as well to help in whatever ways I can. As would I. Uh, I'm sorry. I would be happy to join that okay. subcommittee as well. Okay. Um, I'm looking for someone who would be willing to spearhead that to sort of lead that subcommittee. Um, Amy, if I mean, you seem like the logical choice, but if there's a way that I can help more from outside the school system, I would do that. I don't want to dump it on you. Um, I'm willing to, to pull some, to do some work there, but Kayla, I uh, would definitely welcome your help. Okay. So we have Amy, Pat, uh, Ada, Kayla, uh, who have, and Devora, who have. Um, so let's make this informal. And if uh, Amy, if you would sort of be the lead, I mean, and be in touch with these other people, um, it'll be reflected in the minutes who this group is. And you could always come to me because I've made note of that. <laughs> And if you could work among yourselves via email um, to see what we can come up with and how we can find out information, would that be acceptable? Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Okay. Uh, related to that um, is Joanne's suggestion, which uh, I don't know if you're satisfied with the way this is going, if that uh, speaks to your concern, Joanne. What do you mean about if I'm satisfied with how it's going? What well, you had a motion to have the committee find out what other people and groups in Hadley are up mm -hmm. to thinking about regarding diversity, et cetera. Oh, right. And mm -hmm. you had suggested that we, we maintain a list and make it available to the public. Mm -hmm. Well, and I had... Yeah, I, I I wrote a pretty lengthy email to to Wayne, but I like how this is connected with what we've just started in that we're first finding out, um, you know, what the real experiences are of people. And my idea was just to find out what 
people in the community are already do groups. Uh, what are they doing? What might they have already done? What might they be planning to do? And I first again thought about the the uh, the club at Hopkins. Um, but um, I think what spurred me to write this email to Wayne was that I saw in the Hadley Senior Center monthly flyer that they had done a study of the book White Privilege. Uh, no, no, what? No, no, was it? No, no, wait, uh, um, of um, White Fragility. White Fragility, there we go, that book. And that they were doing it again, like right around now. And yeah. I thought, who, I, I was, what was that? Sarah said, yeah, um, yeah, I saw the thing in the newsletter about doing the discussion and you didn't need the book. Just watch this 90 minute video from the book release party two years ago, which I've now watched twice. And so we had one discussion last Wednesday and we'll have two more on the next couple of Wednesdays. And it was great. It was only like a handful of people, but it was really, really good. Yeah. And, and I loved listening to the video and my daughter's reading the book. And when she's done, she's going to send it to me so I can read the whole book. But I got so excited from just listening to that, that little talk that she gave at the book release. It was really good. And it was like, I'd been hearing about this book for months and months. And I was like, what do they mean by white fragility? I don't get it. I don't, uh, I don't know. And I, I have extra like, copies if anyone would like to. Yeah. yeah. So I've yeah, I have one too. <laughs> So that's wonderful to hear you say that, yeah. Sarah, because that that I I I bet there's people doing something. Yeah. I do not yeah. know. I'm not plugged into any of the you know these different groups. You know, is the Hadley Mothers Club doing something? Is you know obviously there's the the diversity club, yeah. but many of these churches, the library, you know, uh, uh, again Would you this. Be willing would you be willing, Joanne, to contact the library, which is sort of a central yeah. information place in the community, uh, and ask Kayla? You were waving your hand. Oh, yeah, Kayla. Uh, what? <laughs> I had I had said that I would do that at our last meeting, and I did. Oh, oh, okay. great! That's like the so, next thing on the agenda, I think. Oh, great! Yes. All right. She yes. <laughs> While we're still here, Joanne, do you think of any other? ways to get information that you're talking about and no. in what areas you would suggest we explore. well i i think in putting this out i thought maybe some of us on the committee knew what the any of these different groups in town were who a contact person would be i don't i don't uh i don't know you know what even what groups exist in this town I wish there was okay. a master list on their website, but I, I just thought, it'd be, yeah, go ahead. I was wondering about the faith communities, you know, right. sometimes different faith traditions have a commitment to diversity. And that was one area I don't know anything about, but I thought we could explore. Mm -hmm. I, I did contact Nas Muhammad at the Hampshire mosque and explained uh, what we were doing and that we were looking for more diversity on our committee. I sent her our mission statement. She asked for more information. Um, I have not heard back from her. She said it was unlikely. Uh, she didn't know anybody offhand. She would think about it and let us know. I have not gotten any, anything else from her. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Does anyone else have a connection with the faith groups in Hadley to contact them? And ask about it. If not, let's go with, yes, Mark. Uh, I was just going to, I had a few questions, but I was also going to add that um, there's a woman at UMass that was leading, that's how I got onto the White Fragility. Uh, she, her title is Director of Diversity and Inclusive Community Development. Um, and she's in the College of Information and Computer Sciences, and I can give her name and email to anyone. She would be a good resource, and she is a person of color and is very sweet and very helpful and very educated on all of this. So mm -hmm. she could really be a uh, resource. What I is know. her name, Mark? Uh, her name is Erica, E-R-I-K-A. Um, and her last name is Dawson Head, D-A-W-S-O-N, 
and then a separate word head h-e-a-d mm -hmm. this hyphenated dawson head or just uh yes well it is in her email and it isn't in her the signature on her so i'm not sure i can't say con conclusively joanne um, would you be willing to to reach out to her uh, yeah i know her I have been, I've been in touch with her so because oh. I took the same book study group that Mark did and Good I've been you. in touch with her. She's extremely busy. Oh, okay. I will let you know with the excess work you have to do because everything's on Zoom. But yeah, if so we have a focused question, uh, I, I am sure she'll answer. She might not answer fast. Would you be willing to focus a question and ask her and report back to us what she says? About I, how look. we might go about this? Uh, about you might have suggestions well, I, I think I, I guess I'm just wondering as we find key people that w we want to speak to what is it that we want to speak to them about I, I'm not clear on that yet right <laughs> I'm not either I don't I'm not clear on what I'm asking her and if I could add on to those questions I'm sorry I, I was late I had a hard time getting the the zoom connection um, what is the is there a title or a name for this subcommittee? Um, not at the moment. Not at the moment, okay. And do we know that, um, I don't see Christian on here, do we know that the subcommittee doesn't have the same open meeting law requirements? Can they just go off and work and email amongst each other or do they have to set up separate Zoom public meetings? My interpretation of the rules that I've read, which as you've learned is not always 100% correct, is that as long as uh, it's not a formal committee meeting and everyone is not engaged, that subcommittees can work separately. Individuals can contact each other separately. Hmm. And I think for the moment, I will, I will stake some credibility on that and okay. move forward. Okay. Yes, Kayla. And my understanding is that we had one subcommittee that agreed that we wanted to look at issues in the schools, but that this issue of outreach to other mm -hmm. people who are experts in the area of diversity and inclusion was something totally separate and we hadn't even- You're correct. You're had a, correct. like a proposal of a committee. Joanne is leading that chart. She's going to gather information and get back to us about how we might proceed to find out more information. But so you're going to be the investigator, Joanne. I am. I wasn't talking about talking to experts. I was merely wanting to find out what other groups are doing in the town of Hadley. Um, hmm. Sorry, sorry. I'm. I had I'm even. <laughs> I'm, I'm no. on a lower level. Like I'm interested, the congregate, many congregational churches in this valley are real big on this social justice work. Mm -hmm. And so I'm curious, what about the several, I think there's a couple of congregational churches in Hadley, but I have no contact, I have no idea who to contact, I wouldn't have a, any idea who to contact. Yeah. Yeah, um, I have a lot of contact at the, First Congregational Church, um, my mom still goes there. So if you want to get in contact with them, if you want me to send something along, then I will be happy to do that. Would you be willing to just explore this, Joanne? Just take the lead and explore this. Sure. And uh, report back to us what you find. And that person may lead you to someone else in the faith okay. community that you could talk to. Okay. Just and then report that it, you're exploring for yeah. our committee and we want to get information and any help they could give would be appreciated. Mm -hmm. And, and are you separate talking, from that you, is mm -hmm. the committee that Amy is um, heading up at the moment to discover information about the schools. Mm -hmm. And What's Ada, that? your offer, oh, Pat has something. I have two things. One is I'm a member of the Most Holy Redeemer Parish, so I'd be happy to explore oh, great. the Catholic Church, that Catholic Church, if that's of interest. Yeah. Thank you. Yes, definitely. Yes. 
So I just want to clarify. So the information we're trying to get is what is the work that your uh, community, your faith community is doing in the way of diversity and inclusion and social ju- and, and uh, anti-racism. Equity. Yeah. Yeah. I had, I had had a list of six questions that I had sent to Wayne and I didn't include all this because he wanted me to make something much shorter, but I had several questions um, I could share with whoever, but things like what are they already doing with these groups? What have they already done? What might they be planning to start to do? What might they be hoping to do? Do they have visions, goals, or aspirations, or do they need any help? I That's a lot of stuff. But you know, to put a motion to, I ask you to focus the motion for the committee. But right. I think perfectly, uh, perfectly logical to include all of those questions as you talk to people. Right. Both you and Pat, and asking them to give mm-hmm. as many specifics as they can about the work they're doing in this area. Right. Right. I could take this part of the email, Wayne, that I sent to you and pass it to the whole group, whatever, you know, or whoever feels they're going to, like Pat. And Ada, did you say you were going to give me a name of a contact or? Yeah, I can do that. Okay, great. Because then I could reach out and and make that that contact. And Joanne, I'm also a member of the... um... Unitarian Universalists in Northampton, and I can find out who our latest social justice. I know it used to be Kitty, but I'll check and see who that is currently, and I'll get you a contact. Oh, great. Now you're saying that's someone in Hadley? Northampton. Uh, It's the Northampton and Florence, um, the Unitarian Society. Okay. Uh, But but is there a group in Hadley? Uh, no, there's a Unitarian in Amherst and there's a Unitarian in Northampton. Right, right. So, so that was going to be my question as well. So we have Catholic, we have pro- some Protestant groups, um, the Muslims we've checked, uh, checked with. There are no Jewish communities uh, in Had organized Jewish communities, at least that I'm familiar with in Hadley. Who else, what other groups, religious groups, spiritual groups are out there in Hadley. Did you say you're all set with Muslims? Because I do have a friend who, um, uh, I don't know exactly his title, but he he somewhat leads a congregation. Is there a Muslim Mosque? group in Hadley? That I think that's... Oh, okay. Oh, oh in, in Hadley. Okay. Yeah. So Nas could tell us about the Hampshire Mosque and what they're doing in terms of this work. Right. Are there other religious sacred communities, churches in Hadley, other than the Roman Catholic Church and the Congregational Church? Well, I can go look up, find that kind of stuff online probably and compose a list and just begin. I'm happy to do that. that I think there's a Methodist one. They always have a, 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 a rainbow flag outside. I believe mm-hmm. that's Methodist. Mm-hmm. I forget the name of the street. It's it's looking at the UMass horse barns. Oh right. Oh oh yeah yeah. Right. They used that to be the that barn. that's um yeah that's the Wesley Church right. They used to be right. that's a group from Amherst that found yeah. land in Hadley and they're in Hadley. Right. That's exactly. very good. Wesley, yeah, that's Wesley. Wesley. Okay. Good. good idea. They that's just down the street from where I live. Okay. So to be clear, we have Amy leading a group of, of volunteers to talk about uh, uh, race issues in the schools. And then Joanne, you're going to explore the involvement of faith communities and their uh, activities in this area. Pat's going to talk with the Roman Catholic Church about uh, about their involvement in this area. and. Those, you three people can report back to us. Uh, Pat, you and Joanne might want to correspond separately and compile your findings mm-hmm. before our next meeting. Yes, Sarah. Joanne, do you want me to follow up more with the Senior Center and find out more about what they've been doing? Sure. Okay. Sure. I'll be on your team. <laughs> yeah, I love it. So I think we have an agenda item for our next meeting, which is right. for folks to report back to us on what they find. 
Yeah. We seem to be, uh, it seems to me that we are in an information gathering stage of our committee. Mm -hmm. And before we can really take a lot of strong steps, we need to know what's going on. And that's what I think we need to do at this point. So thank you very much. Yeah. I think the other angle that I think Devorah brought up, uh, or maybe somebody else was looking at other communities that are taking this action and doing this work. And so we don't have to reinvent the wheel and finding out about that. How do you suggest we do that? Yeah, Amy? Just riffing off of what Kayla said, I know that a couple of people have come to me and expressed frustration that Hadley was one of the only communities that didn't have a Black Lives Matter action at all. Um, oh. That could be a good place to start because pretty much all the other towns around us have had some sort of organizers doing that kind of work. Huh. That might be a good place to start through social networking to look at the organizers in other communities. That might give us an idea. So wow. Wow. I remember at some point I reached out to Shell Horowitz. Does anybody know him? Yeah. 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 Because I wanted to know who the act, I mean, we've just moved to Hadley recently and I was curious who some of the activists were in town <laughs> and how to connect yeah. to the activists because we want to have rallies on the, you know, and we want to be at the rallies when there are rallies. So he mentioned some Facebook website or some Facebook page and he said, you've got to get on that. And I did get on that, but nothing really came of it. Um, does anybody know Shell? I mean, more more than I do. I don't really know him. Oh, I know him a lot. Hadley Grassroots? Yes, yeah. that's right. I've heard about that and haven't followed up on it. So Joanne, I don't know. Can you talk to Shell and maybe get some info from him? Uh... You could ask him, you've, huh. you've got a lot on your plate. If you wanted to ask or give me his contact information, I will contact him. Uh, do you have his contact information, Devorah? I think I do. If you would give that to me. I will follow okay. up with him. That would be good. He's a nice guy. Is that under one of the subcommittees or is that under the, the general committee? Subcommittee of me. <laughs> <laughs> That's good. I'll follow it up. Just Amy? to follow up with uh, Hadley Grassroots, I believe Emily Pfeiffer is the admin of that group. Oh. Emily Pfeiffer might be a good contact. Oh, she, yeah, I know her. <laughs> what is that again, Amy? What's the name? Uh, Emily Pfeiffer. Uh, yeah, she lives near me. I, she asked, she told me about that Facebook group too, and it's n nothing going on at all. <laughs> okay. So I'm not missing anything. But, but I don't do, I don't do social media anyway. So. I talked with a friend of mine in Amherst who was connected for many years when he lived there with the NAACP and he gave me a name to contact them and I did, and they no longer exist. Right. Uh, they, they sort of died a natural death. Uh, a couple of years ago and have not come back. Hmm. Um, but I'm going to talk with him tomorrow and he may have some other ideas about other committees. Yes, Kayla. I think early on when we were looking at our mission statement, didn't we see some statements from other committees like this in other communities? Yes. Yep. So I would think that would be a lead. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Joanne? Just briefly, back to uh, the, the topic of the Black Lives Matter none being in town. I, I just wondered, I didn't want us to drop that, but I just didn't know what the next step would be to, pers I, to pursuing whether, I guess, I guess this, the statement was there isn't a group in town. Is that, was that Amy who said that? Uh, well, the, I've had two people complain to me about it, and it wasn't that there wasn't a group, it was just that nothing ever got organized. So one person actually asked me to organize something and I was like, I got too much on my plate, can't do that. Um, so, and I also live in Belgertown, so we obviously have our own 
thing right. going on. Um, so anyway, that was just something to think about. It doesn't seem yeah. like there's a centralized um, coalition of, of people thinking through the, it seems like everything is very sporadic and um, disconnected uh-huh. in Hadley. Mm. I do see signs on people's lawns. I, I don't want to cut this okay. off, but I do want to focus our efforts right now and mm-hmm. come up with some actionable uh, steps that we can take, uh, at least from this meeting forward, and to mm-hmm. begin to focus our efforts and gathering information. So I think if it's all right with people, let's leave it at these mm-hmm various groups and people who are going to investigate and bring back information to us that Mm -hmm. we can act on. Um, I'll move on to the next item, uh, Kayla's report about her contact with the Goodwin Library. Yay. So this is a very, very short report, but I've been in touch with Patrick at the library and Jenny at the Parks and Rec. And they're very excited to know that this committee exists and they want to support our work in any way they can. And uh, Patrick in particular said, if we ever want him to come to a meeting, he would. So I think the next step is ours to figure out how would we, how would we, for better word, uh, exploit the relationship with either of those organizations to kind of um, broaden our outreach, but they're really excited. End of report. That was Parks and Rec and and what group? The library. Oh. Yes, Joanne. Uh, just briefly, do, do we know or could we ask if the library has done any kind of um, book studies like the senior center is doing with White Fragility? Any kind of, uh, is that something I should ask or? Well, I'd be, you know, I'd started this conversation with okay. Patrick. I'd be glad to follow up and ask him about it. Um, okay. Great. We have about uh, 20, 20 more minutes, Wayne. I see that. Um, <laughs> we don't have to fill them all, right? Yeah, exactly. <laughs> uh, Taro uh, submitted something, as you see, from our agenda, and Taro's not here, so I'll simply read what he said. It's related to what we've just been talking about. Uh, He suggested that we look into using Park and Recreation and Goodwin Library to help reach out to recruit people to contribute to our efforts. Um, His question is procedural. Uh, The last one, we need to investigate whether doing so is appropriate use of their resources. I I think asking a question of them would not be inappropriate. Kayla, would you be willing to ask him if he's willing to to go further when you visit the library next time? Well, I'm not sure what I'm asking. Would they be willing to speak with us about what they know and what they would like to do? Do they have any suggestions for the committee of places to look, things to do? Uh, Yeah, I I don't feel that that's really that specific in terms of a question for Patrick, but um, I mean, I loved, I loved his response, which was that this is what libraries about. Libraries are about equity and inclusion and diversity. And I wholeheartedly support your efforts. So I, you know, I can ask about if there are any book groups going on about this. That's a very specific question, but I'm not really sure what else we would want to ask. Are there initiatives that they have begun yeah. As a library. That's one question. Margaret, you had your hand up. Well, also, you know, if, if there was, um, you know, any way that we could maybe uh, advertise this through the library or, you know, ways in which once we sort of get a clearer picture of what we're doing that we can use the library as a means of getting information out there. Because I think that's been really hard here in town is to sort of know, well, where do you go for information? Because the town website 
is way behind in terms of logging things that, that, that's happening. Um, so, you know, maybe one of the things we can do would be to even, uh, you know, have the library be a, a way of doing that. Can you suggest a specific reason, uh, a, a specific way to do that? Post something, talk with them? I, I'm not. Well, for instance, the library them. has, you know, they have that board outside their, 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 the library, you know, where they'll say like, you know, we're doing limited, uh, whatever you can pick up the library, you know, but maybe there's a way to do something so that we use this as a way of, I'm just throwing things off the top of my head here, but mm -hmm. even if it was like a, a black lives matter group or, a, you know, some sort mm -hmm. of way in which people who are driving by can, you know, can see that there's the, a book meeting or a white fragility is going to be discussed or, a, you know, some sort of, you know, Something way to, visible. yeah, visible way to, to promote the, um, our, our desire to, you know, really expand this, um, you know, what we're trying to do here in town. So let's make this a part of our homework that we come up with something specific that the library can do in that way and some kind of wording that we might give them or posters we might give them or something specific that that can follow that up. Kayla? Aluna, who works at the library, said she has an email list of some 300 people that she does put things out to. She suggests that for the greatest um, distribution for most bang for your buck, that the schools are the way to go. That's been her experience. So could we put something out through their email list, those 300 emails? Would they be willing? To I think she's willing, she's willing to offer that. If we have some, uh, the thing is, I don't feel like we know what we want to say. You know, right. Yeah, we, well, we would need to formulate a message that we want to get out. Uh, if we were going to put something on a sign, if we were going to post something in the library, what would we put? So I guess we need to think about that. And I will happily receive suggestions for people how we can get who we are and what we're looking for out to the community. And there is one way to do it. I mean, the uh, survey is another way to do it. Survey if, through? If we, if, we would, if we eventually come up with an instrument, a survey instrument that is true. mailed to Hadley residents, that's another way to get the word out. Or to save cost, you could do a survey monkey email. So let's table the survey idea until we can be more specific and bring that up in, in the next meeting. Um, it's, it's a good way of getting information and we certainly want information. Margaret? Kayla, do you need, um, I'm happy to work with you uh, uh, with the Parks and Rec and the library, you know, just to come up with some ideas if- Sure. If that works for you. Okay. I'm gonna move on if you feel uh, it's okay to move away from this. Uh, have we enough to act on? Okay. Um, my question to you is, shall we invite guests to speak to us as a committee? If your answer is yes, then, um, and you can read from your suggestions. Hi, Taro. Uh, you can read from the, the agenda what I suggest from there. So the first question is, shall we invite uh, guests from the community to speak to us? Uh, I'll ask for a show of hands, yes. I see that it's unanimous, thank you. Um, so if so, uh, let's put some specifics to that. Who would you like to invite to speak to us as a committee? Margaret? Well, I'm not sure I actually have a name. To, I don't have a name to give you, but I'm wondering if before we do that, uh, we, 
I think we need more information yet. I think if we get, if we get, you know, by the time we meet next time, we'll have a better sense of what we are uh, trying to do so that we can know specifically who to reach out to uh, and, and ask information of. My thought, my thought in suggesting this is that there are certain people who have information in the community that I want to know. I want to know from the school superintendent or the principal uh, or the police department, or there are those official people who are maintaining uh, specific parts of the government that I would like to hear from. I want to know what their experiences are. That's what I had in mind. Yes, I agree with that, Wayne, wholeheartedly. I also am just wondering about the timing of it. It, it feels to me, and I could be off, that we're sort of building a foundation right now of getting information from these institutions in the community that we've identified to try to get a sense of what their work is, in, what the work they're doing um, in the direction of more diversity, more social justice, more anti-racism, what, what are they working on? That's exactly what I would ask these people, these officials in the town. Okay, my, my only concern would be that I would suspect we'll want to go back to many of them later. When, when we have more information and more specific questions that we want to ask them, having heard what we've heard from the community. I don't know. It, it, it could be. I, I was just going to suggest that maybe at this time, we could assign someone to compile a list of these people that we might be willing to invite later. So that could be like a starting point where we could send our suggestions of people we want to hear from. And then later we can decide which of those people to invite in what order and when. Uh, Margaret, do you want to yeah, speak to I, that? I, I agree with, uh, with, with Amy on that I, and, and Devorah because I feel, uh, I feel it could be a little too soon to go ahead. I mean, I, I also want us as a, as a committee to um, you know, to have some idea of really what who we are, what we're trying to accomplish, get that really a, a, a much more uh, solid uh, sort of footing, so that when we do approach these community leaders, we have a little bit more gravitas or some sort of you know weight to to what we're doing. I totally agree and only wanted to start the process and see from you who you would want to hear from who are officials in the community. So um, mm -hmm. we can leave it for now and wait to compile that list later or we can do it now. Uh, what's your thoughts? Table it, leave it till later. Yeah, why don't we email you with any ideas, you know, suggestions that we might have and we can be, mm -hmm. we can, this can be something we talk about next time, maybe. Fine, fine. Yeah, yeah that's my get thought. The wheels rolling. Start, start making the list and we'll get the names to you. Yep. Hey, Taro? I was wondering if this is something you can throw into a subcommittee, assign somebody here now who's willing to lead that and then have that person be the contact person rather than you, Wayne and then just start to, to go and collect a whole bunch of ideas. That way it sort of gives one person one task to sort of really go out and, uh, well, not one person, but one lead person, um, the ability to just go out and, and start asking the questions without necessarily having to bog down what we're, our, our full meetings. Bless you. Um, I will happily receive a volunteer to receive these suggestions. Margaret, so Margaret Mastrangelo has, has agreed to receive your suggestions for uh, who we would like to hear from eventually, uh, members of the leaders in the community, I'm assuming. Um, so thank you, Margaret. And is everybody clear on that, what we're asking for? Suggestions mm -hmm. for who this committee would like to hear from?
And I guess we can take up later how we will structure that. Will it be in separate meetings or our regular meetings? Uh, that's something to think about because I'm assuming we don't have enough time in our hourly meetings to include a substantive information gathering, but that's my thought. But when we get the list, then we can come up with how we're gonna do it. Uh, that takes care of that. Thank you, Taro. Thank you, uh, Margaret, and all of you who suggested. Is there any other item before we end the meeting? Yes, Pat. I, I just wanted to go back to Devorah's um, goal that she proposed because I, I really see that as a, a like an overarching goal. And it from and as I hear what people have said at this meeting, I think our it sounds like our priority is to learn more right to to learn more about people's lived experience to learn more about organizations and individuals in Hadley who are committed to the work so it, it strikes me that this is a process that we'll engage in over time and as we approach you know the schools or we I mean it's it's just one approaching one organization with the overarching goal of learning more. Right. This is what I consider that we have to do before we can do anything substantive right. for the community. Yes. Is to learn about the community and to know what it is we're addressing. Right. And so I'm hopeful that all of these steps we have planned to take are going to bring back information to all of yeah. us so we can know what we're talking about and then we can formulate questions to give to the leaders in the community. Um, I think that's exactly what we're doing. And I hope uh, if you have any other ideas about how we can gather more information and know the community better, know what the issues are, I think that's perfectly appropriate. Anything else for the good of the company? I'm still thinking about that idea of putting out signs about a Black Lives Matter meeting. Hmm. Uh, are you suggesting that this committee should do that? Not necessarily, but I'm just thinking in terms of who might come to that and the information that we could gain. That sounds like a biggie to me. What information would we offer? What would information would we, would we be offering to those who attended? I mean, I guess it's about, you know, our desire to learn more, uh, like Pat was underscoring, learn more about the lived experience of folks in this community who might come to such a meeting and what it is that we could learn from them about their lived experience on around diversity, inclusion, equity, anti-racism in particular, or racism. <laughs> My knee-jerk reaction is that if you put a, a big name label like BLM on a meeting thing put together by a town-sponsored group such as us, um, there would be an expectation, if I were like private citizen just seeing an advertisement for this, there'd be an expectation that, that I as a private citizen would be going to receive at, at least some information from the committee and from the group rather than just being the one to provide it. Mm -hmm. If you, if we, the committee are looking, are seeking to gain information, that seems to be not that we call ourselves a BLM meeting, but that's where we actually have to do the harder work of going out and finding individual people. And once we amass that, then and we have something concrete and larger scale that we've synthesized and we can give back to the community. That's what, when, what I would expect that our BLM style meeting would, would be like. Mm -hmm. That's just a knee jerk reaction. I don't know that that's right or wrong, uh, but that's what, that's where my brain goes first. Yeah, yeah I hear it's you. It's my understanding that the actions we've decided to take to learn about what the community is doing uh, is gonna furnish us with what we would do to take the next step to find out more and to contact people who are affected by this. 
I think we need uh, as much information as we can about what's happening now and what's going on. And that might be the next step is to share that with the community in some format. Yes, Margaret. And I also think, you know, maybe a, an entry point would be into the school system. I mean, you know, uh, I remember Amy telling uh, uh, this group a while ago that several families left the area or, or they left the school. I'm not sure which, which it was, um, you know, because of their experiences with racism in the school. Um, I think with this general information that we're gathering, we will eventually focus in on specifics and we'll learn more details about our community and what has happened in terms of race and equality and inequality. And out of that will come ideas about how we can address it and make it more public. And also we're looking for ideas about how we can let the community know that we as a committee exist and want to want to learn from them. So just making public that we are a committee, I think is another important step that we will need to address. If there's- I had one other thing, if I yeah. could very quickly, just in reviewing my notes, where did we, um, con what was the, um, in, uh, so Columbus Day in October has been renamed in certain communities, Indigenous Peoples Day. What, what are we calling it in Hadley? How has it been renamed in the schools, for example? I don't remember what was said about that. I don't know. Amy? That's an action that Diversity Club is probably going to address at our next meeting, um, whether we want to uh, bring that to school committee. So that might be a start in the school, and then we can see um, if it goes well in the school, if it's something that the community at large might want to consider for their town calendar. Which committee is taking that up, Amy? Well, we, we'll present it to school committee, and then they will make a decision. <laughs> the diversity Ada. club proposal, yeah. Okay. Ada? Thank yeah. I was actually wondering about that, Ms. Lynn. Thank you for <laughs> mentioning that. Um, yeah, how much time and effort would that actually take? Do you think school committee would be like super receptive to it? Yes. Good. Wonderful. Uh, we have one minute left. Anything that can be said in one minute? Yes, Mark? Um, again, I was late. Uh, the, I think the agenda item I missed was, did we come up with a better, more streamlined agenda process in, in my absence? Because, or did anyone take notes on that while I was struggling to get online? I suggested uh, a schedule for getting us comments and agenda items uh, that they would get to you. Uh, and I think I asked them to have those agenda items to you by September 27 so that we could formalize them uh, and I could get out the agenda and notice of the next meeting in time for it to be official. All right, and the next meeting is, remind me again, October 5th? Uh, October 5th. Mm -hmm. Joanne? Yep, yeah, just a, <clears throat> so I'm gonna begin, but I only have two weeks to begin to do this exploration. Do you want by Sunday uh, for me to tell Mark to put on that I have a report when I might not have one yet. I'm just not sure. I, I can put a placeholder on for that. Yeah, we'll just do as much as we can. Okay, so if he just put something like time for reports, that, that works for me. Okay, thank you. We can call uh, it status update, Joanne. Yeah. yeah, I will uh, I'll entertain a motion to adjourn. Anyone make that motion? Okay, second. Moved and seconded. All in favor, raise your hands. Good, I see everybody's raised their hand. See you on September, October 5th. Thank you, Bye -bye, Wayne. Everybody. And thanks yeah. for your good thoughts. Thank you. Bye -bye.